Migrating to the cloud gives us some very powerful opportunities. Uh, these opportunities primarily surround infrastructure as code, uh, which is comprised of two main legs. You have templates that you write that provision your cloud-based resources and service endpoints. And then you also have configuration management, which goes on and provisions those specific services or provisions those specific servers after they boot. Infrastructure as code uh, essentially is a way to represent your environment through configuration files. Uh, typically we work in JSON, uh, YAML, also you see it in XML. It's a way to describe that environment so you can replicate it over and over and over again and get the same results every time. When we talk about infrastructure as code, we're really talking about two main component pieces. We're talking about some type of template that is declarative and that enables us to order up resources from our cloud provider. These resources could be load balancers, they could be auto scaling groups, they could be individual virtual machines themselves, or they could be some type of service like a relational database service or like a cache service. Configuration management uh, focuses around on rolling out a platform, whether it's a Linux platform, a Microsoft uh, Windows platform, and being able to set that base operating system up and deliver the configuration necessary to uh, run an application, whatever that application may be. We're going to be front loading a lot of our work and we're going to be doing a little bit extra work initially inside the test and development phase so that when it rolls out to production, what we're actually doing is deploying a manifest of changes that's already been fully written down, fully described, uh, fully tested, and fully inside of version control. You have maybe drivers, you may have uh, dependency packages that have to be deployed, all the way up to deploying the application itself. Configuration management is nothing other than writing down every single configurable aspect of your system. And the main thing that we're trying to banish here is midnight changes to the equipment. We're trying to get rid of the need for an operator to actually SSH or RDP in to a particular server and cowboy a change immediately. It also helps you guard against uh, application configuration drift. So you have human hands go in and touch the application. You always have the code base, the original description there to return it back to operational normality. And be able to do that maybe for your dev environment, your QA environment, your production environment. There was always some friction between application developers and infrastructure engineers. Uh, from the infrastructure engineering side, uh, it was very easy to believe that application developers would just chuck code over the wall and, and walk away and not feel any sense of ownership. And then from the other side, uh, there's the requirement from the application developers to release new features and to really generate a large amount of value for the business that they can't do if they're being held in place with old versions of libraries, old versions of operating systems, old equipment, or simply a provisioning workflow that takes anywhere from four to six weeks to get a single server racked and stacked inside of the data center. The thing that changed to bring these organizations together was this idea of API first service delivery. Uh, and it's really the major cloud providers uh, that seized on that because of course, you're using somebody else's computers. They've got to give you a way to interact with those computers. And they made a decision that they're going to do published APIs. Of necessity, we now have infrastructure engineers learning how to code, if they didn't know that before. Of necessity, we have infrastructure engineers utilizing the same tools that application developers have known and, and learned and loved uh, for their entire career, such as version control, such as automated tests, uh, such as push button deployments. We are often asked, hey, I'm not using configuration management. Now, what should I do? Because there are honestly quite a large number of tools and platforms out there. 
We can absolutely help our clients move forwards into an API first world. Uh, the way that we do this is one of our particular strengths. We bring the knowledge and experience that we have managing traditional IT workloads inside of the data center together with our knowledge of infrastructure as code, configuration management, and CI, CD, that's continuous integration and continuous deployment practices. A number of clients come to me and they say, look, I know that I need more automation. I know that I need to move faster. I know that I need to reduce the amount of manual work that my team is doing. How do we do that? You know, the answer is pretty simple. Uh, what we need to do is take a look at the incoming work uh, expressed either through service request tickets or incident management tickets. We need to take a look at the things that we are spending the most time on and then we need to aggressively begin rolling out configuration management and other automated solutions to those things that are causing the most manual work, that are causing the most incidents. Uh, we bring tools such as version control, Chef, Puppet, Ansible for configuration management, uh, as well as continuous integration tools, uh, as well as automated testing to bear on these situations. And we get into a positive feedback loop where we understand that you don't need to automate everything 100% of the time. And you really can begin to make slow, steady progress automating the world but you need to do it by taking single steps and by breaking large problem spaces down into their component pieces. So with configuration management, there's a number of different platforms out there. And honestly, uh, they all get the job done pretty well. Uh, at Anova Solutions, we currently prefer Chef because it's domain specific language, it's DSL, is just plain Ruby and you can do just about anything that you want to with Chef. And because the DSL is just Ruby, Chef recipes look very, very similar, regardless of if you're writing them for Linux or if you're writing them for Windows. And that really gives you a force multiplier when it comes to training and documentation and the process necessary to get into a good workflow with configuration management. We are bringing traditional infrastructure engineering people much closer to a software development workflow. We're storing all of our code inside of version control. We're using linting and automated testing suites to do continuous integration on this infrastructure code. And then we're also using continuous deployment to get it out into production after we have verified that it's been tested and linted and acceptable to the team. We have shifted everything over to infrastructure as code. Uh, all of our internal systems are set up uh, primarily using AWS CloudFormation templates. All of our internal servers are set up with configuration management. So we can absolutely help our clients move forwards into an API first world. Uh, the way that we do this is one of our particular strengths. We bring the knowledge and experience that we have managing traditional IT workloads inside of the data center together with our knowledge of infrastructure as code, configuration management, and CI, CD, and we merge those together uh, with a very practical approach to what is the most painful thing that we are currently experiencing. Nova Solutions knows that journey because we've done it ourselves while we were working for a Fortune 500 company and because we've walked alongside of many clients on their journeys as well.